it's uh, great to be an academic partner, and uh, it's also great to see so many presentations on open spatial infrastructure to ease the pain points that are associated with actually doing spatial data science, especially in a social and public impact space. And so what I'll be talking about is very much in that vein as well to make spatial access measurement accessible. And so when you search for spatial accessibility in Google Scholar, you get two million results. And a lot of these are applications from the public interest domain. So for instance, in healthcare, spatial access metrics are used to define federal healthcare shortage areas, and they're also used to define uh, spatial access gaps to transit, human services, employment, and a variety of other things. And when you look at that work in more detail, then it turns out there's a lot of focus on identifying service deserts, and then the work stops. And instead of looking at the more interesting questions of why are these deserts there, what impact does it have of living in them, do the interventions that are designed to reduce these gaps work or not? So it's very much the same problem that Javier mentioned this morning, that you focus on where, but not on why. And why is that? The reason why that's the case is because it's hard to compute the spatial access metrics and especially the underlying travel times at scale. So for instance, for all neighborhoods in the nation. And until recently, there was also a lack of open, open spatial access metrics uh, to um, implement this, this calculation. And so what I'm presenting to you today is a spatial access package data and tools that we developed to help ease these pain points and make spatial access measurement um, you know, possible at scale. And so this, like a lot of the work at the Center for da Spatial Data Science at the University of Chicago that I'm part of, started as a project-specific research uh, initiative, and then we ended up turning it into a more generic open spatial infrastructure. And the particular research project that this grew out of is by Jamie Saxon and Dan Snow, where they analyzed um, spatial access to primary care from the 70,000 census tracts in the US, um, you know, across the country. And they presented this research at the Cardo conference last year, if you're interested in it. And uh, so this talk is also a call to action to contribute data, code, and um, uh, tools that you have to this open uh, spatial infrastructure to allow researchers and social and public impact uh, projects to um, focus more on generating insights and less on the computational pain of getting there. So let me quickly say a word about um, how spatial access is um, measured often in the most simple way. You take an, an amenity, a destination, like a physician's office, a human service provider, a store, and then you draw distance buffers around that, like in the example on the left, and those buffers indicate how far you are from the location of interest, so this could be one miles, two miles, three miles, and then you get for travel times, the same thing with isochromes that Javier mentioned uh, this morning as well, where you could have like a 15 minute transit time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, et cetera. And so what's the problem with this? If you just look at travel times, it ignores the underlying population um, that is near your location of interest. And if you have a resource that um, has limited supply, like physicians or human services or employment, then um, this is relevant because you're ignoring you know, how many people are hitting this resource and are contributing to congestion, saturation, or overcrowding of that resource. And in addition, from a client's perspective, these fixed boundaries are artificial right, because you're traversing them. And so the spatial analytics that we're implementing in the package that I'm introducing is addressing these problems. And they're summarized in this paper by uh, Jamie and Dan. 
This um, includes not only the classic floating um, area catchment models and access scores, but also a new model that Jamie developed called um, the Rational Agent Action Model, or RAM. And what this does is, is assigns a single access score to each point of origin that indicates how accessible that location is to the amenities of interest. And that score minimizes the cost of access to the amenity, amenities. And that cost of access has two components. Oops. So the first one is travel times, like with the distance buffer model. But more importantly, there's also a um, component of congestion or service saturation in this. And so the congestion uh, term is basically the ratio of demand over supply that's standardized by an area mean. And so let's take the example of um, dentists in Chicago. So you'd have population or patients divided over um, dentists and then that is normalized by the, the average ratio for Chicago. Then for travel times, those indicate how long it takes you to get to the amenity, and that is standardized by um, the maximum time that um, you're willing to um, travel to the amenity. And then you take a greedy optimization algorithm and loop over the points of origins and assign the access score to each location. And so the inputs, as I mentioned, are in this case, you know, population and dentist data as well as travel time. So let's take a look at what that looks like uh, for Chicago. These are the counts of dentists by census tract. And it's hard to discern a pattern here. So um, this is an example of a statistical cluster map that was mentioned earlier as well. And this identifies statistically significant high uh, hotspots of dentist in red. In the, the nor in the northern area, uh, and then the cold spots in um, the south and west. And this is implemented using the PyCell library that was mentioned earlier, or you can um, access this in Cardo's crankshaft as well. So now let's take the dentist data as the input for the, the regular travel time uh, model that measures spatial access, which you can see here, and then compare that in a second to what the RAM results would look like. So um, in this case, we're just inputting the dentist and figuring out how long it takes to drive to dentists uh, within 15 minutes. And then the area in yellow highlights um, the part of the city that has the best spatial access uh, uh, to dentists. And so this ignores any population data while uh, in the RAM case, you're taking the population and this congestion of services at the dentist's office into account as well. And what happens is that better access is actually uh, you know, extended beyond this more narrow area um, for the travel time model only. And these happen to be actually the wealthier areas um, of town, while these are the poorer areas. And so let's take a quick look at how these two models compare uh, taking economic hardship or wealthier and poorer areas into account. So um, here's a map of economic hardship for Chicago. The yellow area is the wealthier part of town. Uh, here's another cluster map that teases out these patterns better with um, low economic hardship in blue and hot spots of higher poverty in the, the west and the south. And so then if you uh, quantify the better spatial access to dentists, this is a little bit goggled, the slide, um, in wealthier and poor areas, you find the same thing that the maps already indicated, namely that looking at travel times only, uh, the better spatial access to dentists is underestimated. So that's 70% compared to 82%. And it's overestimated in poorer areas by travel time. So in other words, if you ignore the potential overcrowding, then um, the travel time model will uh, say that poorer areas have um, better spatial access to dentists than they actually do. 
So let me give you another example from a different domain. In this case, we're looking at spatial access to parks, and this is an example of merging spatial access metrics with big data. And uh, this is based on research from um, Jamie as well, where he wanted to test the assumption of the distance buffer model that many planners use, that parks are used more frequently by people who live close to parks. And then he used cell, cell phone traces for the 20 largest cities to see how parks are actually used, particularly looking at more Hispanic and African-American neighborhoods, and found that this assumption is actually not true, that um, people from these neighborhoods were using parks far less frequently than um, was assumed if you just um, be, looked at proximity to parks alone. And so in this case, we're looking at uh, tracts in New York City and so in, in more Hispanic neighborhoods um, it's the usage of parks is 80% less than expected based on proximity uh, compared to the benchmark of proximity to parks and it's 50% less for African American neighborhoods. If you're interested in the details of this research um, this is the paper that uh, goes uh, into that for the 20 largest cities in the US. And now let me uh, give you an overview of the code, data, and tools to um, calculate the spatial access metrics. And so you can find the spatial access package at access.readthedocs.io. It's part of the PyCell library. It's BSD licensed, which means that you can use it for commercial purposes. There's an API that we're still documenting. The models that are included are RAM, then the classic floating uh, catchment area models, and an access score. And I just discovered that um, last month somebody um, felt the same itch that uh, we felt and also released a package called Akeso that implements the floating catchment area models and the access score, but not RAM. Then this is the workflow that is used by the package to generate the results. You input origin and destination data, which um, then are um, used to compute travel times between them. That is the input for generating the spatial access metrics that are then appended to your points of origin. And the most um, expensive part of this um, operation is the computation of travel matrices. And there's a whole ecosystem for generating the travel matrices that we're basically building on top of. Um, Anna and Datakind already mentioned the OSRM um, package right here. And then um, our goal was to contribute to this infrastructure uh, by um, uh, dockerizing PG routing and Open Trip Planner to make that more scalable. And by the way, all of these slides are part of the, the same website that, um, uh, that I mentioned. And uh, then Logan Noll and our team developed a, a new Python package uh, to uh, compute both the travel times and spatial access metrics um, at scale. So then uh, Dan Snow and our team use the dockerized open trip planner um, uh, computations to come up with pre-computed travel time matrices that we're also making available for free as part of this project. And this is done for three modes of travel, walking, transit, and driving at the track level for the whole na uh, nation, and then tracks and block blocks for the 20 largest cities. Uh, there is a free web app if you're more comfortable with menu-driven interfaces. This takes the package and runs it on AWS with the pre-computed um, travel times, and you can upload your destinations for this. There's notebooks. You can integrate this with Cardo frames, as we've done, and we're integrating this with um, libraries. So thank you. Thank you also um, to Cardo for opening your so source code, and please be in touch if this is something you're interested in.